Good morning class, welcome to our music lesson. But before that, let us recall first our previous lesson. Do you still remember our previous lesson? Very good. It's all about the Philippine blend of music styles. Our ancestors used music to integrate their daily activities like planting, harvesting, hunting, and playing. That's why Filipino people are music lovers because we are endowed with musical creativity and talents. So, any questions about our previous lessons? Very good. So now, we will have some short game activity to start our lesson for today. So all you only have to do is to fix the scramble letter to form the correct word to determine our topic for the day. Understood? Very good. So let's start our game. So number one, what is that? Beverly? Very good. That is Cambodia. For the next picture. Arlene. Very good. That is Indonesia. Next picture we have. What is that? Shalame. Very good. That is Myanmar. Next we have. What is that? Arlene. Very good. That is Thailand. Next we have. Beverly. What is that? That is. Laos. Very good. Next, we have Alicia. What is that? Very good. That is Vietnam. Next, we have what is that? May. Very good. That is Singapore. You happy with our game activity for today? What can you say about the pictures? Very good. The pictures tell us about the different countries that we can found in Southeast Asia. Today, we will discuss about the music of Southeast Asia. Now, I will going to read to you the learning objectives for today. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to analyze the music of Southeast Asia. Explain the distinguishing characteristics of representative Southeast Asian music in relation to the history and culture of the area. And last, perform the music of Southeast Asia. So now, let's discover Cambodia. So Cambodia is one of the most beautiful countries in Southeast Asia. It also known as Kampuecha. It was the center of Khmer or the Cambodian kingdom of Angkor, a great empire that dominated Southeast Asia for 600 years. Their music gained a worldwide reputation in the 1960s until the dramatic political problems in Cambodia. Art music in Cambodia is highly influenced by Asian forms as well as Hindu forms. Cambodian court music is roughly similar to that of Java, Indonesia. So they have a similarities in Indonesia. They feature choruses with large orchestras based on struck keys and gongs. Now, let's discover the pin piet of Cambodian. So, Pin Piet is a Cambodian musical ensemble or an orchestra that usually accompanies ceremonial music of the royal courts and temples. Music is always part of their court dances, mask plays, shadow plays, and religious ceremonies. This group is similar to the Pin Piet ensemble of Thailand and usually consists of 9 or 10 instruments. As you can see in the pictures about the Pin Piet of Cambodia, it is composed of five instruments. Namely, the first we have the onet or the xylophones. Next, we have the samphor, a double-headed drum played with hands. Next, we have the kongvong, the gong circles. We have the skortom also, the two big drums that is similar to Japan. And we have the Qing, the finger symbols of the Pin Piet. So now, we will watch how the Cambodian play the Pin Piet.
So let's move on to Indonesia. So Indonesia is an archipelago in Southeast Asia comprising approximately 17,500 islands with over 238 million people. Indonesia is the world's fourth most populous country and is the fourth biggest nation of the world. Through interaction with other cultures such as Indian, Arabic, Chinese, and European, a wide range of musical styles has been developed. Today, the contemporary music of Indonesia is popular not only in the region but also in the neighboring countries. So there are two basic kinds of Indonesian music scale. So we have the slendro which is the five equidistant tones in octave. Next is pelok, heptatonic seven tone scale with semitone. So both vocal and instrumental music in Indonesia use slendro and pelok scale. So polyponic stratification is a kind of melody that is result of hackett or interlock. So interlocking is a common technique used in gong ensembles in Indonesian. So the Indonesian term for tempo is called the irama. So let's move on to the gamelan of Indonesia. The gamelan or gamelan orchestra is the most popular form of music in Indonesia. There are many types of gamelan, but the famous Javanese and Balinese gamelan are the most famous. It contains a variety of instruments such as metallophones, xylophones, kendang and gongs, bamboo flutes, bowed and black strings. The vocal music is used as ornamentation of the gamelan. It is an important as gamelan too. So first we have the peasant hen is a female soloist singer who sing with a gamelan. Second, the gerong refers to the unison male chorus that sings with the gamelan. So the picture shows you the instruments in gamelan. So now Let's have some video about the performance of the Gamelan Orchestra. Thank you. 
now, let's proceed to Myanmar. Myanmar was known as Burma until 1989. The country's name was officially changed by the military government that took over in 1988. Early civilization in Myanmar dates back on the 1st century with archaeological evidences of Yu Kingdom of Tayekitaya and Hanlin. The music of Myanmar has similarities with many other musical traditions in the region, including Chinese music and Thai music, probably because its longest land border is shared with China. The Saing Waing is Myanmar's traditional folk music ensemble. It is made up mainly of different gongs and drums as well as other instruments depending on the nature of the performance. Myanmar's musical instruments are categorized into two types, the loud sounding and the soft sounding. The loud sounding instruments are performed in open air ensembles at ceremonies and festivals. Most of the saing waing instruments belong to the loud sounding category. So we have the saing waing. So the instruments in the saing waing are ne, a double reed pipe. Next is cha uk lun pat, a set of eight tuned drums. Next is Maung Saing, larger bronze gongs in a rectangular frame. Next is Pat Waing, which is a set of 21 drums in a circle. And next is Ki Waing, small bronze gongs in circular frame. And the slant dua, which is not shown in the picture, is a bell and the clapper. So those are the instruments that conclude the saing waing. So now let's watch the saing waing performances of Myanmar. <laughs> So now let's move on to Malaysia. So Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy in Southeast Asia. It is divided into two regions. We have first the West Malaysia, also known as Peninsular Malaysia. Second, we have the East Malaysia, consists of 13 states and 3 federal territories. So Chinese and Indian culture influences made their mark when trade began in the country. Trading also increased when immigrants flocked to Malaysia. The country is multi-ethnic and multicultural, which plays a large role in developing their culture. The constitution declares Islam the state religion while protecting freedom of religion. Malaysian music is largely based around percussion instruments. It has multicultural influence and is believed to have originated in the Kelantan, Patani region with a mixture of Indian, Chinese, Thai, and Indonesian influences. So, the music of Malaysian may be categorized into two types. We have the classical and folk music and the syncretic or acculturated music. So first we have the classical and folk music. It emerged during the pre-colonial period and still exists in the form of vocal, dance, and theatrical music. 
Next, we have the syncretic or acculturated music that is developed during the post-Portuguese period of 16th century. It contains elements from both local music and foreign elements of Arabian, Persian, Indian, Chinese, and Western musical and theatrical sources. Now, let's move on to Malaysian musical instruments. Musical instruments of Malaysia are greatly associated with their culture and roots. Due to colonization, the stages of development of Malaysian instruments are great. They share some common features with Indian musical instruments. After the colonization of Malaysia by the British, the musical development was influenced by the Western music. So we have the musical ensembles and types of performances in Malaysia. So we have the first, Agung and Kulintang. This is a gong-based musical ensemble commonly used in funerals and weddings in East Malaysia. This type of ensemble is similar to the Kulintang of the Philippines, Brunei, and Indonesia. Next, we have the Kertok. This is a musical ensemble from the Malay Peninsula that consists of xylophones played swiftly and rhythmically in traditional Malay functions. So next, we have the Dikar Barat. This is a type of musical form that is important to Malaysia's national culture. It is performed by singing in groups and often in a competitive manner, usually with percussion instrumental accompaniment or sometimes without instruments at all. So last, we have the Silat Milayo. This is a form of martial art that is similar to the Tai Chi. It is originated in the Malay Peninsula since Christian era and is a mixture of martial arts, dance, and music, usually accompanied by gongs, drums, and Indian obways. So now, let's watch the Silat Malayo. This is a form of martial arts that is originated in Malaysia. So let's watch this. <laughs> Let's go to Thailand. Formerly known as Siam, Thailand is known for being the sole nation in Southeast Asia that has never been ruled by a Western power. It is for this reason that the country is also called Muang Thai, which means land of the free. History and geography indicates that Thai music is conglomeration of Asian influence. Its musical principles and elements are basically derived from Chinese music, while its musical instruments are inspired from Indian and Indonesian strings and gong chimes. The Thais combine and adopted this to their culture and created their own unique music. So Thailand has three primary instrumental ensembles that are similar to other ensembles in Southeast Asia. First, we have the Fifat. It is a mid-sized orchestra that is performed in either outer style with hard mallets or inner style with padded mallets. This ensemble has different types but the highly ornate one is traditionally associated with funerals and ensembles and cremation ceremonies. Other versions of the Fifat ensemble are used to accompany specific form of traditional Thai drama such as the large shadow puppet, chatter, nangyai, and the known dance drama. So that is a picture of the Fifat.
Next, we have the Kruang Sai. It is an orchestra that combines some of the percussion and wind instruments of the Fifat with expanded string section. This group is primarily used for indoor performances and for the accompaniment of stick puppet chatter. Next, we have the Mahuri. This ensemble is traditionally played by women in the courts of Central Thailand and Cambodia. Because of this, instruments for this ensemble are historically smaller. However, regular size instruments are used today. A vocalist performing with the Mahuri is usually accompaniment by the Su Sam Sai. So now, let's watch the PFAT performance in Thailand. So now let's move on to Laos. This country is an independent state of Southeast Asia and officially known as Lao People's Democratic Republic. It is formerly part of the Indochinese Union, also known as French Indochina. Wat Pa Tat Luang Vitien is one of its famous landmarks. The classical music and dance of Laos is highly influenced by India, Cambodia, and Thailand. Themes are drawn from Hindu mythology, the Buddhist Jataka, tales and local legends. The royal interage of Lao kings and traditionally included musician and a typically orchestra improvised song with a set of tone gongs, xylophones, a bamboo flute, and another wind instrument. The Lao Orchestra can be divided into two categories. First, we have the Sap Nyai. This is similar to the Fifat of Thailand with instruments that are strictly percussive but also integrates the uses of an oboe. Two six is a Sap Noi. This is also known as the Mahuri of Thailand. However, it incorporates the use of several Kenny, which is a large bamboo mouth organ and is the most popular folk music instrument of Laos. Traditionally, music called more is largely based around the canyon. So now let's move on to Vietnam. Vietnam is officially known as the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. This country is located on the eastern coast of the Indochinese Peninsula. Vietnamese music refers to the ethnic music that originated from Kien people of Vietnam. This term is also used to address the music of any of the numerous ethnic minorities including the Mondan Guard, Dagard, Thai, Cham, and others. Although Vietnam is geographically part of the South is Asia, 10 centuries of rule by the Chinese of the North have made the culture much closer to Far East than only Southeast Asian neighbors. Thus, early music theory was either based upon or adopted to the prevailing Chinese theory, and the majority of instruments used in the royal court were of Chinese origin. On the other hand, other influences can be seen with the ethnic minorities such as the Cham or the Motagnard peoples, this possibly due to the interaction with the other countries of Southeast Asia. Vietnamese music shows a signs of Indian influences noticeable in improvisation preludes of chamber music known as Rao, the South, and the Dao in the North, as well as the usage of onomatopoeia in drum playing. Next, we have the traditional and folk music of Vietnam. Vietnamese traditional music can be separated into a few major categories, divided predominantly by the way in which were used in the people's cultural lives. 
these categories of Vietnamese music. So first, we have the imperial court music. The most popular of this kind is the Na Nak that was popularly performed during the Trans Dynasty to the Nguyen Dynasty. Next, we have the folk music. This category is extremely diverse because it includes music performed both indoors and outdoors. So it, there are some things also influenced by Western elements and some Vietnamese folk music only makes use of female singers and some have both male and female singers. And last is the religious and ceremonial music. So Vietnamese music performed in religious and rituals or at the funerals. Now let's go to our last destination and this is Singapore. The Republic of Singapore is an independent republic in Southeast Asia comprised of one main island and about 50 small adjacent islands off the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. About three-fourths of the people of the Singapore known as Singaporeans are Chinese but there are significant Malay and Indian minorities. Singapore's cultural beliefs reflect its colonization by the British Empire and its diverse population. Being the melting pot of different cultures in Asia, folk music of this country reflects the culture and traditions of specific groups. The ethnic groups which made a prominent place in the musical world of Singapore have been Chinese, Indian, Malays, and Tamils. Other minority Asian ethnic groups which have also made a mark in the folk culture of Singapore are Cantonese, Hawkins, and Malay Bangwasan. So through the years, the music industry in Singapore grew, having Western influence performances by the Singapore Symphony Orchestra as well as the ethnic music performances mainly in the Singapore Chinese Orchestra. Other performing groups with Malay and Indian influence are still prevalent until today. So now I have a question. Do Southeast Asian music class reveal anything about the country's culture or belief? Very good. Yes, it is true that it reveals the culture of any country in Southeast Asia. They reveals the way of thinking, feeling, doing things, and living life of the people. The folk songs carry the messages and ideas about the people's way of life, dream, stories, and experiences in Southeast Asia. To any question class. So now, let's proceed to our group activity. So there will be the group one. This will be the group 2 and the back will be the group 3. So you have to do is to answer the activity. So write words that describe Southeast Asian music that starts with the letter spelling out Southeast Asia. Thank you so much class for the presentation. Now let's go to the generalization of our topic. So based on the topic, it tells us about the importance of music in every country, specifically in Southeast Asia. Second, traditional music are part of a country's folk music just like in Southeast Asia. Music shows a country's golden life and culture that endured and has been passed down by oral tradition. Third is Southeast Asian musics make us realize just how integral music is to everyone's life and was a part of the everyday life of Asian people. And the last is the music of Southeast Asian have been present since the 20th and 3rd century BC. Music is an important part of their lives because they use it for rituals, ceremonies, courting, and entertainment. Any question class? So now, Get one for sheet of paper and write the countries which is associated with the following word in our evaluation. For your assignment, perform the Indonesian song entitled Burung Kaka Tua. So you have to research that. And after that, you have to perform. You can sing or dance or sing and dance. So the criteria for that is that creativity is 50% and the mastery of the song is 50%. So any question class? So that's all for today class. Goodbye everyone.